In this video, I'm going to cover one of the core concepts in Active Directory pen testing. Specifically, I'm going to be covering curb roasting in this video, and most definitely something you need to know for OSCP, and quite frankly, something you need to know on the job as well. It's going to help you in job interviews. And believe it or not, you'd be surprised how many people that are super qualified in, in many other respects you know, get job interviews and get asked the question, like explain curb roasting or how it works or what is curb roasting? And they have no idea. So just know by learning this stuff, you're actually setting yourself apart from a lot of other um, pen testers from the competition out there, essentially, because it's actually pretty alarming how few people in the pen testing space actually have a good understanding of Active Directory and Active Directory pen testing. And that's another reason why I support the move by offensive security to make this more of a you know, topic that's at the forefront that you need in order to get the certification. Now, I will say there is one prerequisite that is needed before you even think about curb roasting to the point that if you don't have this prerequisite, don't even think about curb roasting. Look at other uh, attack paths. So the prerequisite is that you need access to the machine or in some way you need to have domain credentials. So if you don't have domain credentials, if you do have you know, system level access on a server on the domain, then you know, in a lot of cases you can still uh, curb roast a curb roastable account, right? But that brings me on to the next point. What makes an account Kerber roastable, right? Well, this is pretty much an attack that you're going to be conducting against service counts, uh, service accounts in Active Directory. And basically, service accounts are very much like regular user accounts, except for the fact that they have what is known as a service principal name associated with them. And that is the key part. It needs to be an account that has a service principal name or a spin, as you might see it for short, SPN, right? So let's just cover that. Service principal name. I'll show you <clears throat> one such example, like what they look like, right? So a unique identifier of a service instance. And let's just check the documentation on Microsoft here. Because I'm more of a visual person, most definitely, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well. So it'll help to see it in action a little bit first, conceptually. Um, so name formats for unique spins. So this is the uh, the structure here of how they break down the service class slash host colon port slash service name. And uh, here we go. So... It's going to be something in a, you know, a format like this. And I, I don't think you always see the DC stuff here. But uh, this is basically what we're looking at. And so essentially the only types of accounts they're going to have this service principal name are services. And uh, the cool thing about Kerber roasting is it does not require any unique privileges. So if you have any level of access to a domain, then you can uh, look for accounts that uh, are curb roastable and you can carry out a curb roasting attack against it. Now, here is the caveat. Just because you are able to successfully uh, get the ticket does not mean it's a vulnerability. So if a service account is using a strong password, as of course they should be, then it doesn't matter if you have the ticket because you're not going to be able to crack it and get the password. So being able to crack the hash is an important part because these hashes are not passable. I also want to state that because I know when I was brand new to Active Directory, I didn't understand you know the difference between things that needed to be cracked and things that didn't need to be cracked. I was like, well, I have a hash. I can just pass the hash, right? No, you can only pass the hash on certain types of hashes. Uh, so NTLM hashes, in spe you know, specifically. Not NTLM v2. I just want to point that out there. They're different things. So you have an NTLM hash, and you have an NTLM v2 hash. Those are different things. You can pass the hash on NTLM. You cannot pass the hash on NTLM v2. But with Kerber roasting, you're going to get something different entirely. 
But that was just a bit of a, an aside because with uh, getting the hash for this, it's going to be in the format of a uh, Kerberos ticket, as you'll see here in a second. But uh, what we're going to demo this with is actually Try Hack Me's Volnet Roasted, which, which is a, uh, a VM that you can deploy on Try Hack Me to try to practice Kerba roasting and some different Active Directory attacks. And one of them you can practice is, uh, you know, this Kerba roasting attack that I'm going to show you here. Now, I'm going to shortcut a lot of the potential wasted time and start off already with the credentials that uh, you can obtain through going through this uh, this lab step-by-step. Step. And this is one of the ones that is not guided, so it's more of a free form on your own, kind of like a hack-the-box machine. But basically, you know, you stop the video now if you don't want me to spoil this, or just skip ahead, just skip ahead, rather. Um, but basically, you end up obtaining credentials to an account, and uh, we can then, because we now have credentials, we can now look for curb roastable accounts. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first way that I'm going to show you how to do this is how you commonly see in CTF platforms like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, and stuff like that, where you're attacking from your machine and you're attacking a domain controller directly, in which case you can do this through in packets. It's probably the easiest way. Now, I'm going to also show you another way because with OSCP, Typically, you're going to be going up in a, against an entire Active Directory network. So maybe you're attacking a machine that's on the domain, and maybe you've even compromised another machine, and you already have access on that domain, and now you need to pivot to another machine, maybe another server, or maybe the domain controller itself, right? In that context, you're probably going to be doing your Kerberosting on a Windows machine, and uh, there's a whole different suite of tools that you can leverage for that. I'm going to show you my preferred way. Uh, but because that's such a common scenario, both in the real world and uh, and on OSCP, I'm going to show you that way. Now, in the real, in a real, real red team scenario, right, you might do something like this through a C2 framework or something like that. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but I will show you guys how to do this on a Windows machine. Uh, but first, let's start with Impacket. And this is just my preferred way to do it. I believe there's some other tools that can do this as well. But essentially, I am going to use Impacket get NP users. And as you see here, here's another command that I already ran. That's why I love ZSH. I don't have to remember my uh, commands as much, right? Let's just go and edit this. So Impacket get NP users. Oh, I'm sorry. I am actually wrong, in fact. This is this would be for as rep roasting. We covered that in a uh, recent video, this would be my as rep roast command, but we also have uh, in packet get user spins, right? So here we go. We'll modify this. First thing we're gonna need is the domain name. And it looks like a fully qualified name, I do believe. Uh, but we already we already would have gotten that through the other part of the of this, so. We would have got that very early on from our Nmap scans, but essentially, this is the domain that we're going to use. And then we have, uh, you scratch what I said about the fully qualified. I think this is just the domain name. And then you have the user, tskid. And in this case, we have his password here that we obtained through actually an as rep roast attack. So... Let me let me just copy paste this from when I did this before, just because I don't trust myself to type this correctly necessarily. So now we put the DCIP, which is the IP of the domain controller, I do believe. So let me just check try hack me over here and see what we're running. So 1010-10-102-23. And we want to include this request flag. So this is going to basically accomplish two things at once for us. So by default, it's just going to look for any Kerberosable accounts. If you include request flag, as soon as it finds a Kerberosable account, it's going to go ahead and perform the attack and give you the, the ticket back. So let's run it like this. And just going through this, I realized that it, uh, because it saw this asterisk 
ZSH thought that I was like trying to match a wild card or do some kind of um, search. So if we encapsulate this in single quotes, run this again, then it interprets it correctly. And uh, as you see here, we get back the the ticket. So then basically all we need to do from here is take this into Hashcat or John the Ripper and, uh, and crack it. And the way that I like to do it is, you know, I prefer Hashcat. Uh, you can also use a tool called TGS Rep Crack uh, if you prefer. But the way I would typically do this is I would look at this beginning part here, maybe even copy it. And uh, I would just look up in the example hashes for Hashcat. And I believe on the newest versions of Hashcat, you don't even have to specify the mode it'll actually be able to guess it for you. I'm not sure how accurate that is, how reliable that is, uh, but I, I kind of do it the old way still. Let me definitely make that larger though. So usually I would just come here and I would search it. And you see here, it's going to be mode 13100. And that's what I would use in my hashcat command to crack the hash. You know, I usually run it against rockyou.txt obtain the password. And that's what I did last time as well on this one, I think. Let me look at my notes just to verify that that is, in fact, what I did before I tell you guys wrong. Uh, let's see here. Yes, and they're actually using a kind of uh, complicated password here. So this is the password for the account for... Uh, let's see, where did we end up cracking? If we go back, we can see which account it found as a curb roastable account, right? So it's actually this user here, the enterprise core VN user. So we can then verify the credentials. So this was the password that I had obtained, by the way. And uh, here is the username that this ticket was for. And this is only possible because it was a weak password. And you look at this and it looks like, how did it guess that, right? But if you notice, this actually isn't that complex. Yeah, it has some special characters, but it's all lowercase, no uppercase, right? And it's uh, one number. So it's really important to have your passwords be as random as you can with multiple different character sets. Now, here we go. We will try this out with crack map exec just to verify that these credentials work. And this is actually the wrong IP address, I just realized. So let me just fix that real quick. Oh, wait, no, it's not actually. False alarm. I'm looking at so many different IP addresses and TriHackMe always gives you a different one. So there we go. So we get a uh, we get this green here, meaning that uh, it was successful authenticating to it via SMB. So you could do like tac tac shares and then list out all the SMB shares, so on and so forth. You can move on from there. Now, before we finish things off, like I promised, I want to show you guys how you can then perform the same attack on a Windows machine. So there's a number of ways you can do this in PowerShell. And yeah, here's the uh, shares you have access to, by the way. But yeah, there's a number of ways you can do this. My preferred way is to use, um, let me just grab the link over here so I can show you guys. I prefer the this Kerberos repo from Nidem. Specifically the PowerShell script called getuserspins.ps1. So this is what I would prefer to use. And I even typed up a uh, sort of step-by-step -step for you guys of how I would do this. So the first thing I would do is run get user uh, or run get users or get user spns.ps1, right? And that's going to allow me to essentially do what I did with... Um, in packet minus the uh, request part. Basically, it's going to go and find all the Kerberosable accounts for you. And now after you do that, you want to actually get the ticket. So this is where you're going to have to run an additional command. This is where you can run this. And 
now that you have all the tickets, then you can run this command specifying the service principal name of the service that you want to extract the ticket of. Okay. So that's the important part. When you run this one, you're going to get, this is where you're going to get all the spins, right? You're going to get all the uh, service principal names and you choose one that you want to attack. And that's what you put in here. The spin of the one you want to target. You run it. This is all one command here. You run. So at that point, uh, you can use something like Mimi cats. And if you're really lucky and there's no AV on the machine, you can just use Mimi cats straight up. Um, you know, you just down, you can even like, you know, transfer it to the target machine, run it. If there is antivirus, well, things get a little more tricky. Maybe use something like shelter to embed it into a known executable, a trusted executable. You know, there's tons of different techniques out there you could use and we'll cover those in another video. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see that some different antivirus bypassing techniques. But essentially, once you're able to run something like Mimi Cats, you could do a Kerberos list slash export. And that's going to give you all the uh, all the tickets. So this part here is just going to, to give the, the information so that uh, you can then extract it with Mimi Cats. So after you run this Mimi Cats command here, that's actually what's going to get those tickets, those KR, those .kirby files on your machine in that directory. This is the command that's going to do that. But basically, this is the prerequisite command that you have to run first so that this command will work properly for you and then you can extract the tickets. So then once you have them, uh, you can do the TGS rep crack like that with your word list and the .kirby file. Typically, the way I would prefer to do it is use a tool called Kirby to John. And you pass it just the um, the ticket, the name of the ticket dot Kirby, that file, right? And that will get it in the format that we that we just saw it in. Uh, basically, the Impacket tool gave us. So that'll give it to you in this format here, and then from there you could crack it with Hashcat. Now, if you do the TGS rep crack, it's going to crack it for you. I just found that. It's a Python script. It's pretty slow. Hashcat for me is a lot faster. So that's why I prefer to do things that way. But it's all preference. But yeah, if you find yourself up against, you know, you're on a Windows server and you need to do some curb roasting, hopefully this video is a good resource for you to help you navigate those waters. Because especially if you're doing, if you've done a lot of CTF stuff, maybe you haven't had as much experience doing these active directory attacks on an actual Windows system on the domain. That's definitely the boat that I was in when I first got into all this. So hopefully this helped. Let me know if you have any questions down in the section below. And if you want to get into more Active Directory videos, I have that on screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.